a bit of a situation. Kia ora everybody and welcome back to another day in the life. We're at Kennet River and I'm hanging out with the brother Alden. We're off on a dive mission today. I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to run you through the whole process of this dive. Things get a little bit dramatic but uh, you'll have to stay tuned and find out. We kick off the day by getting geared up, heading across the road and a short walk out to the reef. Oh, no, mate! No, mate! Conditions were looking primo as, and I couldn't wait to get in the moana. We are at the moana and gonna go out there for a quick kai gather. <laughs> gather some kai for the weekend, it's my birthday gathering on Saturday. So hopefully the morning is going to provide some delicious treats for us. I'm super grateful, super thankful to be here. Tamanu Tara, the sun's shining bright. We have brother out in here as well. And it's a beautiful day. Okay, so my first challenge upon entry was making my way through this shallow reef structure. I had to find a decent channel so that I didn't get washed up on the rocks. There was not much swell around, but it did seem like it was starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, the visibility is poor just from all of the silt and all the swell and all the movement in the water. It doesn't take us too long but we managed to ride the current all the way out until it drops off. You can notice straight away the change in visibility. Water's a lot clearer. And just keep an eye on the seaweed because the seaweed says a lot about the kind of movement that's in the water at the moment. From the surface, it doesn't seem like much swell. Right, we made it out here. Let's go down and have a little look at what's underneath here, eh? We're gonna push out a little bit further today and just keep going until we find something. But obviously underneath it's a different story and the feeling when you're in the space is very overwhelming and quite chaotic. I push out to about maybe 200 meters off the coast and I start working on the bottom, diving down and having a good look around. I'm like curious to find out what the kind of structure is out here, what kind of fish species there are and maybe what kind of strange or interesting things I can find. I come across this nice overhang with a kind of a cavey kind of area and I was really hoping to find a crayfish or lobster tucked up in one of these cracks and crevices but unfortunately I couldn't find any. There was lots of abalone sitting around here though. But this was about the time where I started to really notice the shift in the current and look at my if you observe my float line it's pulled tight which means that the current is pumping this was another interesting uh, structure reef structure a big beautiful ledge uh, i always make an effort to come down and explore these spots because you never know this is a likely space where crayfish or lobsters uh, can be hanging out and different fish species they all love to feed on the nutrients that well up and um, hit these ledges and rise up to the surface we're in a bit of a situation the current's pumping hard 
around the coast so instead of fighting it we're going to just ride it the only thing is there's a bit of swell that's pumping in on our reef around the corner we're going to have to swim way out wide and come back around and come back in the bay that way Woo, the mine is powerful today man you can feel it man it's just so powerful Oh, yeah, at this stage, it was starting to get real for me and I started to realize, okay, there's no way that I'm going to make it back to where I started. So I had to really surrender and make a move. Along the way, though, I just kept exploring and when I found something interesting, I'd dive down and have a look. But as the dive continued, the swell just increased, currents increased visibility dropped and the fish became a lot more scared <laughs> so I couldn't bloody get close to them The sweep wouldn't come close, the butterfish wouldn't come anywhere near me and all of this movement in the water really made it feel very chaotic. My breath holds were like average and it was just a very uncomfortable dive. One of the more uncomfortable dives that I've been on. Uh, at this stage I'm probably around 300 meters off the coast. Lucky enough the, the reef runs for I don't know how far out so it doesn't really drop off that deep I'm probably diving only in around seven to eight meters maybe ten in some of the deeper spots this was when uh, I realized see I dropped out to quite a quite a bit deeper water here I'm probably in about 10 to 12 meters and I started having to actually make an effort I'd stop if I rode the current anymore it was actually pushing me further out to sea <laughs> so I had to give it some guts and, and put in some energy to start kicking into the bay before I got swept right around the coast I didn't panic though and I just carried on and trusted in my gears trusted in myself and just kept going when I found a shallow spot I dropped down and try again at trying to get some fish but I'm telling you, man, those, they just, none of them wanted to borrow me. Probably because of the state that I was in internally. I wasn't in a very calm state. I was in a bit of a survival mode, which always you'll notice when you are trying to catch fish or spearfish, they can really sense that different state of vibration or that kind of intention pouring out of you and they won't come anywhere near. Well, that's what I've noticed anyway. As I managed to make my way closer into the bay, this is what the terrain looks like. Very sandy, patchy sandy areas with weed and it's like a it's like a being in a desert snow uh, a sandstorm. Okay, we've been sucked right around the coast and we're coming back in the other side. We've got no fish. The weather's turned pretty custard. Uh, I'm thinking about jumping out, walking back around, and maybe jumping back in. <sighs> yeah, we'll see how we feel when we get back on the coast. <laughs> that current was just too grunty and it made it really difficult to uh, catch my breath as I was down on the bottom and my bottom time was real average and lots of energy, lots of movement underwater as you guys see. The fish, I couldn't even really get close to the fish. When I first got out there, it was probably my best opportunity of getting some fish. And then as I got swept around, it just got worse and worse. So I'm gonna go have a look at that spot again and see if we can maybe get back in. We'll make a decision when we get there. Oh, my mate hasn't seen me yet. He's looking for me, look. My mate's looking for me. Need to tell him where I am. Hold up! Hear me, the wind's too powerful. 
Come for Brother! I thought I, I thought you didn't know where I was. Get lost in the um in the surges, eh? The car and scrunchy airs out there, and then I just I just let go and I just rode it because I was using too much energy trying to stay in one spot. Yep. But I, I it's because I went too far out. Yeah. Um, and then it just picked me up and just carried me all the way around. Oh, all fast. the way, brother. All the way. Oh. Just got smoked. I just was riding the way of currents, and then I just popped in back around this corner. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. I thought I'd better come over and let you know. But um, I, I feel like I want to shoot in there, and I just want to tuck in this little shallow spot over here. Get some, try and get some kai, and then come back in. Yeah, like outside the waves. Like way around. I came, I came right around the outside. Right around, brother. The land, like the. the yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah, it was good to see the bro and it was good to let him know that I was safe. He'd been keeping an eye on me while I was out there, but he ended up losing me just because of the how far out I was. Uh, so we're back into it and I'm giving it another go. I've decided to get back in there. The weather has definitely changed, but I know exactly where I need to go and I know exactly what my mission is and what my plan is to just make my way outside this shallow reefy area to the drop off and just start working in those beautiful little pockets where I've seen uh, all the fish, all the fish species. <laughs> so when I was, as I was on my way out, I saw this shell, this beautiful shell uh, down in one of the cracks and I couldn't help myself. I saw it as a beautiful taonga and I put it in my pocket and we carried on. Moving through these shallow areas uh, always require quite a bit of energy to push through because you've got so much water moving in such a shallow space. Uh, it's very, very strong. <laughs> but I'm having the time of my life. I love this stuff. I love it. it. Makes me feel alive. Makes me feel powerful that I'm interacting with the natural world in this emotional state. This for me is like... If you can imagine the ocean as being a person that you have a relationship with, this is this is an aspect of that person uh, when they're emotional, when they're going through an emotional phase. And it helps me really build a deeper connection with the ocean itself to experience it in all of its different phases, not just on the clean, calm days. This is how I build a... This is, this is why I've got a really strong relationship with the ocean and I trust myself when I'm out here. Bro, right, let's try again. Let's try again. Back out into this beautiful spot and I'm hopeful. I'm confident. I'm very confident. The current and the swell just makes it chaotic when you're down here. But as you can see, there's beautiful ika, beautiful fish everywhere. I just need to maintain my focus and decide which one I would like to put in my kete, my bag. I love sweep. That's what I'm lining up now. And I finally get a shot on one. It comes close enough. I finally get my first fish after about two hours in the water. Well, we finally got a fish. Finally. Now I'm here to heart in Moana. And the sun's come out beautiful. Right, I'm focused, I'm confident, I'm on a mission, and I get my mojo back. It doesn't take me long to start putting fish into the bag. I decide to target sweep, butterfish, and I make a decision to take this parrotfish as well. They are a good size and they actually really are quite tasty. 
I don't usually sacrifice my spear into a rock, but uh, it was that time of day and it was time to make a move and just put Kai in the kete, put some food in the basket. couple of sweet butterfish and a parrotfish I was happy with that and so now it was time to actually make the journey back into the coast I knew it was going to be a bit of a challenge and it was going to require a bit of guts because just the amount of movement in the water and the visibility was poor plus I, the challenges of not knowing where rocks and reef are you could easily get pushed in by wave and hit your head, blah blah blah. There's so many risks if you really think about them, but I don't, and I just trust and I keep going. Keep kicking. I had one mission in mind, just get to those rocks, and then that was that would have been a successful mission. It worked out really well that the brother Alden was up on the on the rock there because that gave me my point of reference. And I knew that I got in close to where he was standing so I could always keep an eye on the direction that I needed to go. As you can see I'm constantly popping my head out of the water to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. Using my arms to pull through the water as well, not just the legs. Got to remember you're fighting all of that moving water that's pulsing and pushing out from the shallows into the deep. So you've got to time it so that when a wave comes through, you give it a good kick, give it a good push, ride it for a bit, and then hold. Wait for the next set to come, give it a good kick, give it a good push, and then keep doing that all the way back in. I take a little bit of a breather on top of this rock, and I'm just feeling grateful that I'm just about there just got to push a little bit further that big wave just comes in and gives me a little boost visibility is nearly zero so just keeping the head popping out to make sure angling my spear gun up so that the tip doesn't get smashed into a rock as well just about there been a big day. The ocean's been giving plenty of kai. Few challenges really helped me push my comfort zone and the sun's come out. It's a beautiful day. Greeted by our awesome brother Elder up on the top. And I made it safe and sound. We made it! <laughs> yeah! That was a good today. We got our car. Soon as we got back onto shore, whipped up some beautiful raw sashimi. We got abalone and sweep with avocado, tomato, and the sauce is made from soy and sweet chili. Just a basic one. That's all we had really. If I was going to add anything more to it, I'd probably put some ginger, um, garlic. Okay. Thank you to this beautiful being and these beautiful creations for this powerful journey. Thank you to the previous kai that we've had that's nourished us up until this point. We are truly grateful. Thank you to the sunlight and that beautiful energy that it's feeding us. May this beautiful kai journey well into our tinana and into our bodies and go towards all of those purposeful places to help us move through life with purposeful action. Always bless the kai, always give gratitude, take that moment to just drop in and be present. You like that power, eh? Yeah, boy. 
Remember I had a rule. And it also just Ooh, makes cool. the food taste extra delicious. The um, sesame oil would be like the ultimate as well. Yeah. I had some of the hua, the hua is the gut sack of the pawa or the abalone here, as you call it in uh, Ahitereri or Te Whenua Moe Moe Tastes like mussels. Creamy texture, eh? Mmm. Ooh. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah, creamy mussels, brother. Fine, no, that's a wrap. Gonna close the vlog off here. It's been an epic little mission out there. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Maori or the fine note.